best way to kind of explain how to determine the lengths um, and the, the thought process when, when drawing your free body diagrams. So I'm just going to use the expert TA as the example, but even, even for um, the example problems in the note packet or in, um, in the exams, you're, uh, you're going to want to follow these same exact steps as if you were doing them in expert TA. So for this problem, it was, it was one of your homework questions. I figured it'd be good to, to do some of the problems that, that you've already seen and you can compare to how you did them. So we've got this block on an incline and we're told it's sitting at rest. So that's a key right there because sitting at rest tells you that the acceleration is zero. So the sum of the forces in both the y direction and the x direction need to be zero. And so that's the clue that tells you what the lengths need to be. So all the forces in the y direction need to cancel out. All of the forces in the x direction need to cancel out. So that's what you want to be keeping in the back of your mind as you're drawing these vectors to match up the lengths. So let's start by figuring out how many forces we have. We have a weight force that's going to be pointing downwards. We have a normal force from the ramp that's going to be in the positive y direction. And then we have friction, which opposes the motion or the attempted motion down the ramp. So that's going to be pointed in the negative x direction to oppose the motion. So we've got three forces acting. So we're going to need three vectors. So let's come down here and let's start by adding our weight force vector, Fg. We know that that, wants, that will always point straight downwards. The weight will always be directly down from the object. So let's get in that quadrant and we need to move it at an angle and then that needs to be pointing straight down. So one thing to keep in mind is you have the sum of the forces calculator down here. So that's telling us the sum of the F total X is the sum of the forces in the X direction. So right now we have a positive net force in the X direction. That's because the weight component in the X direction is pointing to the right. And then we have the net force in the Y direction that is negative. And that's because the Y component of weight is pointing in the negative Y direction. So we're just going to start off by choosing some length for our weight. And we're going to base all of our other lengths based off of that. And we're going to use this sum force calculator down here at the bottom to help us determine the lengths that we need. Because we know that all of those forces must, the, the net force in the x direction and the net force in the y direction must match the acceleration. That's Newton's second law. So we're going to add our other force. We'll, we'll go with the normal since that's what popped up. That is going to be perpendicular to the ramp. And so that's going to be pointing straight up in the positive y direction. And we're, we're at the right angle. So now we need to choose the length. What should the length be? So even if we didn't have this calculator down here, what should the length be? Well, we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. 
So we know that the forces in this y direction, the positive ones should be the same length as the negative ones. So we only have one negative y direction force and that's the y component of weight. And we only have one force in the positive y direction and that's the normal force. So we know that the normal force must be drawn the same length as the y component of the weight force. So when you're drawing your FBD, say on your paper, you want to draw your components out for weight because this is the reason why. If you've drawn out your component for weight, you can match what the length of your y component of weight is and draw the normal force the same length for the vector. But in expert TA, we have this net force calculator that basically does the same thing. Since they don't draw out the components for you, they have this net force calculator to help guide you. So right now, the sum of the forces in the y direction is negative. So that tells us the y component of weight is longer, has a longer vector than the y, the normal force vector. So we need to make our normal force vector longer and keep, keep an eye down here on the left, watch what happens. Extend it, Oop, there we go. So now we have a sum of the forces in the y direction as zero. And that's what we expect for a block at rest. We want our sum of the forces to be zero. Say you made it even longer, what happens? Now it goes positive. So within expert TA, you have a lot of leeway in terms of how long you draw your vectors. See, so you go from negative to positive and there's a decent amount. So as long as you're within range, and this is gonna be the same if you're drawing it on your paper too. What I'm looking at when I'm looking at your paper is exactly what I just talked about. Is your normal force vector smaller than your weight force vector because it has to be smaller because the normal force vector is equal to the y component of the weight and the component is always going to be shorter than the overall vector. So now we have all of our sum of our forces in the y direction are zero. That matches up with what we expected physically. So now we need to add our last force which is the force of friction that opposes the motion or would be motion of the block down the ramp so it needs to be in the negative x direction so that needs to be at an angle of 180 and so now we want to do the exact same thing Say you didn't have the calculator for expert TA and you're doing this on your paper, what would you match the length of this frictional force vector up to if you know that the sum of the forces in the x direction must equal zero? So you should be thinking to yourself, well, we in the y direction, we match the normal force with the y component of weight. Why don't we just match the frictional force with the x component of weight? because those are the only two forces acting in the x direction. Since they're in opposite x directions, you wanna make them equal so that they cancel out. So what you're doing is you're matching this frictional force vector to the x component of weight. Again, that's not drawn here, that's why you're given this calculator. So you're just gonna move your vector accordingly until the x component of weight or the x component or the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero so that the frictional force matches the length of the x component of weight vector and so again this highlights in your own free body diagrams i highly suggest drawing out your components for forces that are at angles. 
because you're going to use those components to draw the lengths of all the vectors based off of what your net force needs to be. So for this case, we have a net force of zero because our acceleration is zero. But that isn't always the case. So we're gonna take a look at another problem too um, where, where the object is moving. But for here, all the, all the forces must sum to zero. You wanna break up any forces that are at an angle into its components so that you can deal with just the y direction and just the x direction and match the lengths so that the net force points in the direction of the acceleration. And so let's make sure we get the right answer and we get the correct answer so we must have drawn it right. So I'm gonna create a separate video for a, a different problem, but this is the overall process. Breaking things up into components if they're at an angle, forces that are at an angle, and dealing with the x direction first, or the y direction first, and then the other one after. Matching up the length of the vector so that the net force or the net length of the vector points in the direction of acceleration.